Are you table height? Are you table height? Are you table height or podium? Uh, you are, yeah, you're like, you're off to the side of it. But when I get, I'm going to end up in here. Yeah, well, I'll be tight. I'll be tight. That was, uh, that was the Good morning, everyone. I'm Constable Danny McKinnon, Winnipeg Police Service Public Information Officer. Today, Justice Minister Gertzen is here to announce provincial funding that will assist in tracking the origin of crime guns. And following uh, Minister Gertzen's announcement, Inspector Elton Hall from the Organized Crime Division will come up and answer some questions. Minister? Thank you so much, and uh, thank you everybody for being here this afternoon here at Winnipeg Police Service headquarters again. We have all seen uh, and heard about the rising number of gun crimes in Winnipeg, in Manitoba, and really across Canada and North America. It is alarming, it is dangerous, it's a trend that our frontline police officers are seeing, and they themselves uh, are put at risk because of this trend. It's a concern to bystanders, it's a concern to civilians who can be at risk from stray gunfire. In response today, the Manitoba government is announcing that we are supporting our law enforcement partners with new funding from the Criminal Property Forfeiture Fund to the Winnipeg Police Service for equipment and training that will allow investigators to work with seized firearms to better track and restore their serial numbers where those serial numbers have been obliterated. Our peace officers work hard every day to keep our community safe. And we thank those who are in the Winnipeg Police Service, the RCMP, and all of our officers across Manitoba. The Firearms Investigative Analysis Section is an important unit within the Winnipeg Police Service and conducts firearms investigations, including shootings and firearms tra uh, trafficking and tracing. This unit was originally created through Manitoba Justice Winnipeg Police Service partnership utilizing funding from the federal Gangs and Guns Funding Initiative. The work with the Winnipeg Police Service is done here and it is groundbreaking for our province. For the first time, we have crime gun analytics co-located with police that produce leads to investigators, matching crime guns to crime scenes and the ability to intercept these weapons before they are used again. These are the types of government initiatives that have a direct impact on reducing gun violence in the city of Winnipeg and the province of Manitoba. My officials are currently working on proposals to expand this capability across Manitoba and link this vital work to the Manitoba Criminal Intelligence Center. Put simply, criminals cannot be allowed to further pr proliferate and use guns in crime. Manitoba Justice is committed to taking bold steps to reduce crime and the use of guns in crime in Manitoba. To be clear, there is no lawful reason for a person to possess any gun that has a serial number that's been obliterated. Removing a serial number from a firearm is almost always a sign of criminal intent. The ability to restore serial numbers from seized firearms will provide valuable, timely information to these investigators. This funding will help investigators trace the origin of firearms, identify suspects, and determine how criminals are illegally acquiring these firearms. The funding today for this equipment and for the training is relatively modest. $17,000 gets to go a long way because we have partners in this initiative. And I wanna make a special, uh, special recognition and special acknowledgement of the Consul General for the United States, who's located here in Winnipeg, Brian Koontz, who's joined us here uh, this morning because he helped us with a connection through ATF. 
Four members of the Winnipeg Police Service Unit were recently uh, certified and completed training through the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, the ATF um, attache that's located in Ottawa. And that connection uh, together with Ryan Coons from the Consul General of the United States has helped us to get some of the best expertise in the world and bring it here to the Winnipeg Police Service. So thanks again, Consul General, for your work, and I look forward to continuing to work with you and other partners. Manitoba Justice looks forward to supporting future police training opportunities with the ATF, and our goal is to provide training opportunities for all police in Manitoba to allow them to do their work better to keep all of us safe. Gun crime is an issue through North America, and training and other law enforcement is an important opportunity for officers to learn and to ensure that they have the best tools and understanding and knowledge to be able to get these guns off of the streets, keep them off of the streets, and trace them back to those who are using them in our community to cause harm. Thank you very much for the opportunity to be here this morning. Uh, I now look forward to uh, hearing more details from the Winnipeg Police Service, and then following that, I think there'll be an opportunity for questions. <clears throat> Good morning. The funding provided by the Criminal Property Forfeiture Fund will be used to purchase a ductless chemical workstation used by technicians to work on firearms with obliterated serial numbers. Any firearm with its serial number obliterated is a crime gun and is a trademark of a smuggled or trafficked firearm used for criminal purpose. Removing a serial number prevents the tracing of the firearm and allows smuggling and trafficking groups to remain active. As stated in the release, 859 crime guns were seized in 2021 and FIA successfully completed 89 serial number restorations. To date, the Winnipeg Police Service has seized 455 crime guns, 139 of these in quarter one, 224 in quarter two. Recently, the Winnipeg Police Service received additional training from the ATF as mentioned and an additional four officers were trained to restore serial numbers from firearms. To date in 2022, the Winnipeg Police Service have successfully lifted 79 serial numbers from crime guns seized in Winnipeg. This funding will provide the firearms investigation and analysis section the ability to safely lift obliterated serial numbers from firearms using a combination of physical, chemical, and particle recovery techniques. This process is very technical and labor intensive. The table in front of you, you have five firearms there, four of which are handguns uh, that give you an example of what an obliterated serial number may look like. Uh, the numbers should be where the uh, yellow tabs are on the guns. <clears throat> That's all I have for today. I can take questions if you have any. Uh, yes, what number of crime guns uh, come without with their serial numbers removed? Like what percentage? Um, I don't have a percentage for you, but uh, generally the guns that are trafficked in from the United States or the crime guns that we do see, a majority of them have obliterated serial numbers. And if, could you just talk about the value of restoring serial numbers? People may wonder why it's important. If the guns are illegal anyway, why, how would it make a difference in restoring them? Right, so um, in order to track uh, the origins of a firearm, it's really important. So. For example, we just uh, seized uh, quite a few handguns uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, we were able to uh, lift some of the serial numbers from those guns. The other ones had serial numbers, but the majority of these guns came from Texas, the state of Texas, the United States. So what that does that now uh, provides a time frame for us. So were these guns brought in three days ago, or they brought in three years ago, 20 years ago? You know, if it's fairly recent, let's say within the last three to five months, uh, we can now, we have the ability now in Winnipeg to start tracking where that gun was used, if it was used in a crime here. And it all starts with the uh, lifting of the number on that gun. As well, uh, if you can lift the number on a gun, you can uh, determine if the gun was stolen, um, if it was used in other crimes, if it was used in the United States in other crime. An example I can give you right now is the guns I was just talking about from Texas. Uh, we ran it through the American database down there, and we know that one of the guns uh, is being uh, asked for by the uh, Texas State Police. Uh, they want the gun back for an investigation they have. So we've recovered it in Winnipeg. We lifted a serial number, and that's going back to Texas now. The, um, 
where do the majority of guns with obliterated serial numbers or got crime guns, where are they coming from? The ones that you season with a pipe? Uh, a good percentage of them come from the United States, different states south of the border. I don't have an exact number, but it's it's high. It's gonna be it's it's between it's well over fifty percent. I'll say that. Yeah. And and then where does the balance come from? Is it um, where do you, are they like locally purchased that have been you know having the serial numbers taken off or or stolen weapons purchased first in Canada? Well, you're asking where the numbers come off. You no, know, where do the balance of these uh, crime guns come from? So, from the states where you see the rest coming from? Oh, so uh, like I said, uh, well over 50% will be coming from the United States. The other ones will, a uh, good percentage will come from Canada. We have seen some from Europe, uh, believe it or not, but uh, uh, the large percentage are from the United States. Um, and will this have any, does this have any bearing in terms of 3D guns? Uh, or that's a totally different topic? In terms of tracking their origin? Generally, it's a uh, different topic. So, in most cases, 3D guns will be printed guns. Uh, the receiver, so the handle, the base of the gun is the printed part. Uh, that doesn't come with a serial number. Obviously, it's printed. It's made of uh, plastic or it could be made anywhere in North America, for example. It's not to say we can't track it. Sometimes there are serial numbers in other parts of the firearm, so we can sometimes track the parts of those guns. It really depends on the gun we're talking about. And that gun's last, but the, in terms of the work of the guns and guns uh, unit, how could you just place the importance of this this new initiative or the, the expansion of this work? How important is this new work in in what the, the unit is already doing? So the unit is seizing, I know there's this additional <coughs> ability to restore the firearms. How significant? Well, it's really significant for a variety of reasons. So uh, the Guns and Gangs Unit, for example, work in conjunction with our Firearms Unit. They work in conjunction with the uh, Firearms uh, Investigation and Analysis section as well. So when we receive information back where the firearm came from, uh, you can generally start an investigation. So I, I brought up a time frame. If the time frame is quite short and the gun is uh, fairly new into Winnipeg, for example, it allows us the ability to backtrack that gun pretty quickly here and determine who had it, who was arrested with it. You can start determining maybe what gang is using it. Were they trafficking it? Are they trafficking it into the city? Was it used in uh, crimes within a city? Is it a gun that's being trafficked amongst gangs in the city? It's all about timing, but it also helps that it starts with that serial number and it starts with us lifting that number to actually start that investigation in a lot of cases. Um, the fire, the gang, guns and gangs unit will be the initial unit generally to get the guns off the street or general patrol members. It's the firearms unit or investigative unit that actually starts investigating uh, the number along with our FIAS unit. Can you uh, repeat the name of the equipment that you're purchasing? A ductless chemical workstation. Ductless. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Um, I do have uh, just a couple questions sure. for the minister. Well, I think you're doing a great job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but just before we start, I was going to just follow up on a, on a question regarding um, ghost guns, 3D, 3D printed guns. It is something we're we're concerned about as a province and looking at potential initiatives uh, to further uh, restrict the availability uh, for uh ghost guns or 3D printed guns to uh, to be brought into the province. No, it's a significant issue south of the border. Uh, we've seen that. It's an issue here, not to the level that it is uh, in the U.S., but we want to be proactive and not allow it to become that issue. So more to say about that in, in the future, but since you raised it. So, right. Just to follow up on that, are you considering legislative changes then? Yeah, it's, it's something we're certainly looking at as a potential. Um, you know, there are two different issues that are going on. There's the 3D printed guns in plastic. There's the other importation of parts for, for guns. Now, we want to make sure, of course, we're not capturing uh, those law-abiding gun owners who are, are not using weapons for, for crimes, but for those who are uh, trying to have untraceable guns for other reasons. So, um, yeah, that's being considered. We'll have further announcements for you on that. 
Just on the criminal property forfeiture fund, do you have uh, numbers on how much money uh, is in that fund to date and what is, uh, I guess, the... Yeah. Tired of coming to announcements. Uh, there's going to be quite a bit more yet. Uh, it, it's several. It's several million dollars that that are within the fund. Uh, they still remain in the fund. Um, I think it's uh, less than ten and more than five. I don't give the exact number. Right, that's right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.